Hello, I'm Joe Dillette and I'm making a statue. Uh, this is a statue out of basswood that's 36 inch uh, tall and uh, what I'm putting on the back of the statue is a fin and that uh, is going to hold it. After the statue is done this is going to be removed but this fin is what I'm going to hold it in the super jaws so I can work on the thing uh, moving it up and down and tilting it between the super jaws. So that's my method of holding. Uh, this is a statue for a new Catholic church uh, in uh, Michigan and uh, it is a statue of St. Clair. So this is the block of wood in the super jaws and it's held by that rib that I just fastened in. So it's right between the jaws. It's held pretty good. I can pound on it pretty good. When I was on vacation I did a sketch of the statue. Uh, the customer approved the sketch with a few changes. I scale that sketch and I'm ready to draw it onto the block of wood. What I've done is I have drawn the image onto the wood and uh, off of uh, my design here. But I made changes. And uh, now to save that drawing, uh, what I did is I put tracing paper on and I traced it because as soon as I start carving I'm going to lose the drawing. So I want to preserve the drawing. Now I also did the side here too. So let's just take them off. save them for further reference. So I did make a fair amount of changes. The changes were to uh, the monstrance and uh, this is symbolizing the Catholic Church so it's round now where I had it square round for unity. The center of it is our Lord, is the Eucharist, has seven points for the seven sacraments, has a stable base to show the strong foundation. Of the seven points, the sacraments, baptism is the top, pointing up. And I, uh, because the monstrance is gold, it's heavy, uh, I had two of her hands under it, kind of supporting it. Uh, it needs a firm grip on it, so I put her right hand there on it. I also uh, put a waist uh, cord on, uh, like the St. Francis uh, and the Order of uh, Franciscans have. Uh, I'm going to need to make the feet a little bit smaller, but this is kind of my uh, image. So now, with, I also have it drawn on the side. So I made the same changes on the side. Everything lines up now. Like the nose lines up exactly at the height, so I'm sure everything is going to fit. And I changed the hand position here also. And uh, so now when I start carving, the first thing I'm going to be doing is I'm going to profile the front. So when I start carving, the first thing that I'm going to do is profile from the front. So I'm going to lose the drawing on the side. That's why I have the other drawing. Uh, but I'm going to go straight back. And so uh, that's the first step. It would be like taking a bandsaw and cutting it out on the outer line. But I don't want to use power on it because as I'm carving, uh, I'm thinking about how to make these folds because these folds aren't going to end up exactly like that. I tried to visualize it, but uh, uh, there is going to be inspiration coming to me as I go along. So I want to take it slow and easy by hand and with the chisels. 
and uh, chop the wood off and I can think about the whole position. So in theory what I'm going to be doing is after I get the profile done, then I am going to start carving from the front. And I'm going to carve it like, uh, like a bathtub. In other words, if this was laying in the bathtub and, uh, and you're draining the water out of the bathtub, what is the first thing that's going to come out of the water? Well, that will be the monstrance. So that will be the first thing. And I'm going to carve the image back. And I'm not going to do any carving from the back side until I have all my planes on the front established. Once I have all of them established, how deep I want to go, then I can carve from the back. If I start carving from the back too early, then I fixed that position of how deep it can go, and uh, it limits me. So I, the method that I am carving is the old world way, with chisels and a mallet. So the mallet that I'm using is a 19-ounce mallet. I have a also a 12 ounce mallet that I use for uh, smaller details. But we're roughing it out right now and a 19 ounce uh, mallet will work fine. And uh, the chisels that I'm using are uh, just the basic shape. This one's got just a slight curve to it and uh, that's the main one that I'm going to be using for the, uh, uh, this roughing out. Um, I have it mounted in the Super Jaws it's mounted on that fin in the back, that wood that I screwed on. We're going to be hollowing out the back. So where the screw holes are, uh, that's going to be hollowed out. Uh, the customer said that it will be positioned at about eye, her eyes at about our eye level or a little higher. So I have it a little bit higher and vertical. And the lighting is going to come from the top, so my shop lighting is coming from the top. So this is about the position that it's going to be viewed at, and that's the best position to carve it in. So you can uh, see how quickly the drawing is going away. So you think, wow, all that time putting that drawing on there and it'll be completely gone. But I've created the other uh, drawing, my tracing, in case I need it again. But I needed to do this to make sure everything fit. So I will not be using any power tools for this. Power tools like band saws or I don't use the uh, uh, Dremel tools and that. Everything is going to be done by hand. In this first step with cutting out the profile and going straight back, uh, it's important that the sides be square going back. So if you change it, if you fan it out or make it smaller, as you move the object, these planes back, it'll change size. And you don't want it to change size. So I use a square, and uh, this trench that I'm going across here with the V-tool is a reference point. So uh, what I do is I will create a reference point close to the line, make sure that that's square, and that helps me uh, smooth down and get the rest of the square. And then I come back and I check it with a square. But it, it, it's helpful if you have these reference points every so often. This rough out stage is pretty easy because 
it's pretty simple just to go straight back with the lines, uh, follow the lines all the way back, just kind of like a bandsaw. But uh, there's more enjoyment doing it with the chisel than with the bandsaw. And while I'm doing that, as I said, I'm trying to visualize, it gives me the time to visualize this figure then into the wood and what I want to do with the planes as I go back. Trenching also helps you with the grain splitting off larger pieces. So right now all I'm trying to do is to get these straight back and uh, profile the whole thing. So this is the only area I've got left and then we will be starting around the uh, face. I like to get the head set on the shoulders and that kind of sets up the balance. So now we've got the profile all cut out and I'm going to start on the planes in the front curve again. I said the first thing I'm going to do is set the head on the shoulders, get the balance right, but first I'm going to get a reference. So I'm going to put the uh, side view that we traced before we carved off the image. Put this uh, carbon paper in here. Uh, let's see, I think I have the wrong side facing. Just get a reference on where the face is, just the depth of the face in relation with the neck. I'm not going to do the eyes and everything, I'm just going to do the outline. There, that's just a rough idea. In setting up the shoulders uh, and the neck and all the balance, the first thing to do is to locate this little hollow of the neck. That is the center of the shoulders and uh, that is uh, primary in setting up the balance. So that's that point right there. I don't know if you can see the pencil mark. But what I did to get that depth, I transferred the tracing drawing back onto the side and I picked up that depth of where that mark is on this side and I transferred that over and that's how I got the depth here. Now once you get that depth you can start working around the neck. The neck comes forward. This is the deepest part. Then the neck slopes forward up to the chin and up to here. Now I'm still moving the face back but when I'm moving the face back, I'm keeping an angle on the face. Your face is at, at about a 90 degree angle. So if you were to walk up to a corner, your nose could touch the uh, corner. Most people's noses can touch the deepest part of the corner and your cheeks lay alongside. So uh, uh, that makes your face at a 90 degree angle. So that's what I'm setting up here. So uh, after I get the face situated where that's going to be, just roughed out, then I'll start working on the veil. 
and that. The shoulders, I have a pencil line it's getting a little faded, but I started with these joints on the shoulder joint, and this is the top of the shoulder. So what I'm doing is I am transferring that back. That's how I get the top of the shoulders. And uh, so then coming down on the face here, I'm working the face back. And to get the depth of the face, I am also using that drawing that I put back onto the side. So uh, I, I'm not going to be going too deep there. And I'm concentrating on keeping that line in the center of the face. So we're trying to get the, the plane set for these. So I'm cutting this back a little bit uh, and then before I do too much here on the uh, cloak, the elbows are way back here. So I need to, to uh, do uh, the depth at least a ways down here to about that depth so I can get that arm to move back. So. Uh, I won't move the arm back until this is to the right depth below. That'll help me place where the elbows go. So both of the elbows are going to be back and that will affect this whole shape right in here. In determining how far back this uh, uh, veil needs to go back, I first had to do the hands. The hands are going to determine where the end points are. So this hand and the monstrance comes right out to the original face. And then I'm going to move this back. Probably this will get moved back also. But the hands are roughed out right to where they're going to be. And we, the, uh, I've got targets here where the elbow is. And so that's where the arm is. So that's how I started doing the angle and now I'm going to take down this surface here. We're in the portion of the carving where we're blocking out and getting our proportions right, checking symmetry. Uh, and what I'm doing here is using a calipers measuring from the hollow of that neck uh, where we determine that deepest point and we're getting the symmetry of the shoulders and getting the distance right. So this distance is right here. We have to take some more off of this side. Uh, a woman's shoulders is about one and a half head heights wide where a man is two head heights wide on an average. So uh, uh, that I have to take this shoulder in a little bit. We're blocking out the hands and uh, the face, the neck, and trying to get some of the flow here. Uh, so uh, of the veil coming down, working this part of the veil back. So this basswood is carving very nice, nice smooth, very clear wood.